Hi there. So apparently the hot new trend on YouTube has been these so-called unboxing reviews where someone opens a cool new toy on video and proceeds to demonstrate it. And that includes cast iron pans, which is why we're seeing these unboxing reviews for all of the latest cast iron pans from Lodge, Field, Butterpat, Finex, Smithy, Stargazer, and so on. Of course, there's another kind of cast iron pan that's available everywhere, and it only seems fair there should be an unboxing review for one of those pans so you can know whether it's worth buying and using. And so I went to a local Big Lots discount store and picked up this Great Gatherings cast iron skillet. The store shelf had this marked at $12, but I got this on sale for $10. Now, this is a typical modern cheap cast iron skillet made in Asia and sold here in the United States next to those worthless $3 kitchen knives and those so-called non-stick frying pans. Folks who know even a little about vintage cast iron pans consider these Asian pans to be worthless. They're not valuable as collector's items and you can get a modern lodge skillet for only a little bit more. So why would anyone want to own one of these, never mind review it? Actually, there are several good reasons why these cast iron pans are made and used by many people every day. If you use cast iron at all, it's likely a family member or a friend gave you one of these pans as a present, maybe even from their own kitchen. If you're on a limited budget, it can be difficult to spare even $10 or $15 for a brand new kitchen utensil, even something like a large skillet. If you look at thrift stores or Salvation Army, it can be very difficult to find any cast iron pan at all. And if you come across one, it's likely to be something like this. So if you're in that position, then a cast iron pan like this can be very useful and a priceless item because unlike those other cheap pans from the dollar store, even an Asian made pan like this would still last forever if it's taken care of. And also, this pan makes a very good expendable or disposable cast iron pan. If you're going on a camping trip and you still want to cook with cast iron in the great outdoors, would you want to take a priceless family heirloom like a vintage Griswold skillet on a camping trip? At least, this pan, if this pan is lost or damaged or stolen, it's not a great loss. And besides, it's still a cast iron pan. And if you end up owning a pan similar to this, well, there's no reason not to use it because it's still excellent for cooking. This pan has absolutely no manufacturer's mark on it at all, but we can identify it as an Asian-made pan by the long, thin shape of the handle. Many Asian-made pans have these ridges on the handle, which are meant as a thumb rest when you hold it in your hand. This pan has a Made in China label that comes off easily. For a while, importers were required to mark the country of origin on the pan itself, but this was changed when regulations were loosened in the 1980s, and now they only have to mark the country of origin on the label instead of the pan itself. And of course, the surface of this pan has a rough sandpaper feel to it, which is very different from the smooth surface of a vintage cast iron skillet. Because of this, a lot of people think this pan is worthless and they think it's never going to be as non-stick as a vintage USA-made cast iron pan. And in fact, that's not true. And even though I'll certainly take this vintage Birmingham stove and range skillet over a modern Asian pan every time, this is still a good pan for cooking, as you'll see here. The seasoning instructions for this pan are basic and, frankly, not very good. I've learned from experience that heating the oven to 300 degrees is not hot enough to properly season a cast iron pan. That's why I prefer a popular method that starts by heating the pan to 200 degrees and from there rubbing Crisco or vegetable shortening all over the pan rather than vegetable oil. This is because Crisco won't get rancid and sticky after a few days the way vegetable oil does. After this, 
we wipe off the excess oil, then heat the oven up to 400 degrees and let it bake on for two hours. When the pan cools off, we now have a coating of seasoning and at last, we're ready to start cooking. Whether your cast iron pan is made in Asia or America, there's an ancient Chinese cooking rule to follow that says hot wok, cold oil, food won't stick. Heat the pan for about 10 minutes on a little less than medium and it's ready for cooking. If you ask on the internet what you should cook first in a cast iron pan, the answer will almost always be bacon. But when I first put bacon into this pan, it actually stuck to the pan. However, this was because store-bought bacon actually has a lot of sugar in it. After a few minutes of cooking, there was a lot of bacon grease in the pan, and then the bacon didn't stick at all. It only took this short time for this modern pan to become non-stick, and the bacon slid around on the pan with no problem at all. After cooking the bacon, we then use the bacon grease to fry some eggs. As you can see, cooking low and slow also allow the eggs to cook without sticking. Once again, even though this pan felt rough and the spatula was scraping the rough surface, the eggs didn't stick and there was no difficulty cooking these eggs at all. If there's one real difference between a modern pan and a vintage pan, it's the scraping sound made by the spatula when it moves across this rough surface. And that's probably what a lot of people don't like about modern pans. And finally, this pan was taken off the stove and put right into the oven without cleaning it at all. We heated the pan to 400 degrees and prepared cornbread. That's because the best cornbread is always made in a cast iron skillet. We added corn oil to the pan and heated that for a few minutes to get the oil good and hot. And as anyone knows, when you make cornbread, it's absolutely necessary for the batter to sizzle when you pour it into the pan. And all we had to do was bake this for 30 minutes and we had cornbread. Not bad at all for a cheap, disposable cast iron pan. Barely a tiny bit of sticking and that's all. A plate of fresh cooked bacon and eggs accompanied by a golden brown cornbread. And finally, it only took a very quick scrubbing under hot water to clean this pan. We set it on the stovetop burner for a few minutes to dry it off, then give it a very thin and quick coating of Crisco while it's still warm. And we are done, and this pan is ready for another day. And so this is a common modern day cast iron frying pan that can be found at Big Lots or Family Dollar and many other discount stores. It's hardly as fancy or attractive as the cast iron skillets from Field Company or Finex or Lodge, but it's still a cast iron pan. And as we see here, it works just fine in the kitchen and if you find yourself in possession of one of these pans well there's certainly nothing wrong with using it you can replace it with a vintage pan if you can find one and then of course you could give this away as a gift or donate it but until then you could still use this pan for what it was made for it's certainly one of the highest quality kitchen items you can find at a store like Big Lots, and I would gladly take this pan over the other so-called non-stick pans sold there. I hope you like this review, and I don't think there'll be many others like this one. 
but I hope it provides you with some basic information on using and caring for any cast iron pan, both new and old, because it's still the best pan in your kitchen. Thank you for watching.